What's up, Bills Mafia? I got eight storylines to watch for when the Buffalo Bills face the New Jersey Jets on Monday Night Football. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. Well, Bills Mafia, I got eight storylines heading into the Monday Night Football game against the New Jersey Jets. And here we go. Once again, shout out to Bills Wire for creating this article. So let's get this thing started. All right. Keeping opening day success versus the Jets. The Bills hired Sean McDermott, head coach, in 2017. Since then, Buffalo has faced the New Jersey Jets three times on opening day. The Bills have won all three. It's a much different Jets team now, but hey, not a bad trend for Buffalo right there. Uh, by the way, Bills Wire, let's change this. Let's change this to the New Jersey Jets. Please get it right, get it right. But I love you, Bills Wire, but you got to change that. Got to change that. Uh, anyways, yeah, listen, um, Sean McDermott has owned the Jets uh, in particular has on the Jets, really. Uh, but especially on opening day, uh, we are, what, 3-0 and now against them. So, uh, yeah, all three. So, that being said, uh, listen, I want to go and talk a little bit about this Jets team, these Jets fans uh, in, in general. You guys got to back it up a little bit, slow it down a little bit. Um, you guys haven't uh, done anything uh, in a long, long time. You haven't won the division since 2002 when you were nine and seven. Um, and yeah, so listen, if you want to dethrone the AFC East champions, the three time AFC East champions in a row, three consecutive times, uh, Buffalo Bills, you have to earn it. And that is easier said than done when it comes to the Buffalo Bills. And listen, week one, uh, you, you know, it, it's just a one game. I get that. But, hey, let's see what you guys are made of. Uh, you guys talk a lot of talk in this offseason. A lot. Of, you're getting all the hype from the ma national media. And, hey, I get it. You got Aaron Rodgers. But once again, you got to prove it. And uh, going back to your record, uh, eh, let's, let's just date back since 2017, right? Uh, you were five and 11 in 2018, you were four and 12 in 2019, you were seven and nine in 2020, you were two and 14 in 2021. When you got Sala as your head coach, you were four and 13. The next year under Sala, you were seven and 10. By the way, you finished, uh, last in the AFC East with Sala. Sala has not even cracked into the top three in the AFC East, right? always finishing last. So what makes this year different? Well, for the Jets, that is. Well, okay, the defense has gotten better, no doubt about it. Um, young, it looks very impressive. However, you still have not shown that you can uh, win this division. Now, you went out and got Aaron Rodgers. Kudos to you. However, Aaron Rodgers uh, is another year older in his career. He did not look the best last year. And it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how Aaron Rodgers gets along with Salah. Um, mind you, Aaron Rodgers is a coach killer, right? And we all know this dating back to Green Bay. He's gotten a couple coaches. Uh, well, I know it for a fact he got one coach fired and he didn't get along with the other one. Um, and let's just face the facts. We don't know what Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers is going to be uh, in, in New Jersey, right? This could work out either really good or really bad. And we will find out real soon because I'm going to tell you right now, the media in New Jersey, New York, however you want to call it, they uh, are aggressive and they will go after Aaron Rodgers. Uh, it's not like Wisconsin, boy, where they were just uh, Rodgers was the man 24-7. No, 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 no. That won't work that, it worked that way in New Jersey, New York. Um, and it's going to be real interesting to see. But week one, uh, yeah, we've owned the Jets. So, 
Uh, good luck to you, but you're not going to win uh, this game. Anyways, let's get to the next game. Let the next thing. Can Terrell play? Oh, guys, uh, the Bills named Terrell Bernard their official opening day starter that will replace Tremaine Edmonds at middle linebacker. So, uh, can he play? Bernard did not suit up all in the preseason and is still getting the nod. What does that tell you about Dotson? That Terrell Bernard is getting the nod at middle linebacker and did not even play a single snap in preseason. That tells you how bad Dotson was. And I told you all when I made that video a while back, we have the Bills have a Dotson problem. And it's true. They had a Dotson problem. And clearly they do because they didn't even start him at middle linebacker week one. And he got the most snaps because Bernard uh, wasn't healthy. And Bernard hasn't sh shown anything. Bernard hasn't done anything in an NFL game, really, right? He was in there a little bit last year. But listen, he didn't get many reps, right? Didn't get a lot of snap counts. And week one, boy, oh, boy, this is a test. Going against Aaron Rodgers, a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, this will be a big test. Uh, for Bernard, and is he up for it? I don't know. I don't know because I've never seen the really the kid play middle linebacker at, in, in an NFL setting. So we'll see. I hope. I hope. Uh, I hope it works out. But if not, we got Christian Kirksey uh, right now, and, and, and you know, learning the playbook. And you may you may wind up seeing Kirksey, uh, you know, week three, week four as your new starting middle linebacker, depending how uh, Bernard plays uh, for the first couple weeks. Uh, while Kirksey's learning the playbook. But uh, I, I hope it works out. But I, I just feel like uh, Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott, really took a gamble uh, on Dotson, and it totally backfired. And uh, here's where we are today with, with Bernard starting at middle linebacker week one, who got zero reps. So, yeah, it, it's a little – I'm a little nervous there. Uh, th that's one spot on the defense that uh, I'm a little nervous about. All right, next one up. All right, which secondary shows up? At one point in time, the Bills had an elite secondary consisting of safeties Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, plus cornerbacks Trey White and Levi Wallace. Eh, Levi Wallace? Eh. <laughs> Wallace is long gone, but the other three remain. Like Bernard, Christian Benford was named Buffalo's starter at cornerback this week. But all the others are returning from less than ideal seasons last year. The entire trio dealt with injury to varying degrees. But after Poyer resigned this offseason, they're all they'll all be motivated to prove themselves. And that's true. So there was a lot that happened last year once and they didn't really mention Micah Hyde going out week two, which was a huge loss that not a lot of people talk about. Micah Hyde going out really set this defense back last year. Really. I'm telling you guys, um, you're talking about the best safety duo in the NFL still, in my opinion, with Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. And Micah Hyde going out week two early for the se season ending, by the way, neck injury. And then not to mention Jordan Poyer was was dealing with injury since training camp last year um, with an elbow. And then he had a crack. I think he had like some ribs, a rib injury. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't a good season last year with injuries for the Buffalo Bills, especially in the defense. Um, but, yeah, so Jordan Poyer battling injuries all last year, Micah Hyde being out. Uh, then you got the injury to – oh, then Trey White didn't even come back till uh, Thanksgiving, and he wasn't 100%. We all know that, right? Uh, and then you had the rotation of Christian Benford, Kyer Elam. Uh, Dane Jackson didn't play too hot last year, right? He was our CB1 until Trey White came back. So it, it just – last year, yes. Last year's uh, DBs weren't the best, but there was a lot had to do with injuries as well. This year, going into this year, there's some good positive – things to see one Trey white 100% back right 100% mentally 100% physically and that's awesome right that, that we're getting the old Trey white back hopefully right hopefully he's the old Trey white even the 90% Trey white I'll take right you're getting back uh, a healthy Micah Hyde you're getting back a uh, healthy Jonah Poyer you're getting a second year player in Christian Benford who's only getting better and he earned that CB2 spot and I'm excited to see what this kid brings. And once again, this week one matchup is huge for Benford. Why? Because he's going against one of the best to do it in Aaron Rodgers, future Hall of Fame quarterback. So, boy, he's going to get tested mighty quickly. So, yeah, I think this DB group is going to be way better uh, this year. Um, so let's move on to the next. 
Rogers debut. The guy I was just talking about. Look at that old man. <laughs> Josh Allen and Aaron Rodgers are good buddies. That is true. They both talked about it all week. We've all made friends on the golf course, right? But sorry, Josh. The reason this game is on the national spotlight has much more to do with Rodgers signing with the Jets this offseason. That will be the largest storyline of Monday night. He is a future Hall of Famer after all. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. Listen, there, listen no shade on Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is a future Hall of Fame quarterback. There is no doubt about it. Um, but it, you've watched his career here in the last two years. It's dwindling down a little bit. He didn't play very good last year, especially when the game counted the most uh, versus the Lions. He they win, they're in. He did not. He had a very poor performance. Uh, granted, he didn't have the greatest help, but he did have Watson. Who let me tell you, Watson. You could debate Watson uh, over Wilson, uh, who's a better receiver. I mean, they're both up there, right? And you know, like I said, he's going to a younger Jets team. Now, mind you, he got some. You know, Randall Cobb came over Lazard. But what did they do for you last year? Jack squat, right? Let's be real. Watson was your dude, right? And now you got Wilson, right? That's your going to be your guy. But you got to have a connection, right? And we don't. What's that connection? We don't know, right? We haven't seen it really, right? Rodgers, I think, played one one series in, in the preseason. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Rodgers uh, gets a connection with these younger guys. Um, but listen, um, you know. I got nothing but respect for what he's done, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the NFL. Like I said, he is an NFL. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, future Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, but uh, it, this is Josh's time now. Josh's time to shine. Uh, Josh, is, Josh is still way in his prime. Josh is a top five quarterback, top three quarterback. Um, I have him really as the best quarterback in the NFL, uh, in my opinion. Now, of course, many, many can argue Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL, but. I just feel like Josh Allen with everything he gives and offers on the football field with heart, with his arm, with his speed, uh, mobility, strength, you name it. I think Josh Allen, to me, is the best quarterback in the NFL. But you got to win a Super Bowl, right? So I get that argument as well. Patrick Mahomes has two of them. So uh, we'll see. But, yeah, this is a no doubt about it. They put us on Monday Night Football for a reason. The Jets also were on hard, hard knocks, right? It's 9-11. It's in New Jersey, New York, whatever. You want, right? <laughs> right? They're going against the Kings of the AFC East. So there's a good storyline there, right? This is all a good storyline. I get it. Boy, the NFL is super smart uh, putting this matchup uh, on Monday Night Football week one. So let's get to the next one. Diggs involvement. Uh, right or wrong, fair or unfair, Stefan Diggs was in headlines all throughout the offseason, which led to him skipping out on mini camp practice. Even if he's been very quiet and seemingly a great team, a great teammates uh, all summer, Diggs and his involvement in the Bills' offense will be a topic of discussion. Uh, I agree, um, but to to an extent, right? Um, we all know Diggs had an issue really with the coaches. It had nothing to do with Josh Allen. I don't care what anyone says, right? Um, but that is behind him. He's already said it. He's ready to move on. It's all about winning a Super Bowl, right? He listen, Josh. And him and his teammates, they all love each other, man. This is a tight group. And um, listen, man, um, I think Diggs, there's going to be no problem, right? The only thing, I, only problem I could see happening is if for some reason this Buffalo Bills team uh, just does not play good this season and it unravels, which I don't see that happening. I, I just, I can't see that. It Look at the Buffalo Bills record. Under Sean McDermott since he's been here, he's had one losing record, guys. That was in 2018 when he was six and 10. 2017, he broke the drought at nine and seven, right? 2018, six and 10, Josh's rookie year, right? 2019, 10 and six, we're in second in the division getting to the playoffs. 2020, we win the division at 13 and three. 2021, we're 11 and six, we win the division. 2022, we're 13 and three, we win the division, right? That is, listen, that's very, very, very good. Um, so, I, th listen, there's no doubt that the Buffalo Bills can win the AFC East. There's no doubt that this team is going to make the playoffs, right? There's just no doubt about it in my mind. It's the playoffs where we tend to struggle, 
right? Where we hit this brick wall. And I think that's what Stefan Diggs is frustrated about. So I don't think you will see any kind of frustrations from Stefan Diggs in the regular season. Unless, like I said, for some odd reason, the team just unravels, which I don't see happening. Uh, but in the playoffs, it's a different situation. You know, if we get into the playoffs and we do what we have been doing, right, which is just shitting the bed, let's be real, then, yeah, I can see Stefan Diggs having uh, uh, another, uh, you know, lash out moment or moments on, on, on uh, you know, <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter. And, and we're right back to that in the offseason. But right now, regular season, we've never had an issue. Uh, we've been a solid team. We've proven that. And I don't think you will hear anything from Stefan Diggs during a regular season, in my opinion. All right, next up. Life without Vaughn. Von Miller, Von Miller remains on the Bills' pup list for the first four games of the 2023 season. His knee injury just needs a bit more time. Against the Jets, how does the Bills' pass rush look without Vaughn? Gregory Rousseau and Leonard Floyd will lead the line against a New York O-line that has left something to be desired this summer. I agree. The Jets' O-line is not the is not very good. They're average at best. And I'm going to tell you right now, Von Miller won't return until probably week six, okay? So get used to it, Bills Mafia. You're not going to see him for a little while. And that's okay. We want Von back 100% mentally, 100, 100% physically. That's where we want Von. We want Von down the stretch heading into the playoffs, right? We don't need to rush Von back and have a setback. We don't need that. That's the reason why you picked up Leonard Floyd, who's averaged nine sacks in his past three seasons. The dude is the dude. Like, he is legit, right? He's that guy. And Gregory Rousseau is going to be that guy, and I believe he is a guy, uh, is that guy. I know he's a guy. But uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, listen, he went from four to eight sacks. He doubled his sacks from his rookie year to his second year. And there was no sophomore slump when it comes to Gregory Rousseau. Um, now, we, uh, season three, uh, heading into season three for Gregory Rousseau, I expect even bigger numbers. He's getting, he's only getting bigger, faster, stronger. Um, and I expect a 10-plus sack season for Gregory Rousseau. And this game here, going against that offensive line, uh, yeah, he's going to eat. OK, and I think Gregory Rousseau winds up getting at least two sacks in this game. He's going to create a lot of pressure on uh, Aaron Rodgers. And yeah, it's 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 not going to go good for the Jets O line. Um, and that's one thing I think the Bills should do in this game is really attack, attack Rodgers. Um, be, uh, you know, bring exotic looks, exotic blitz packages and get after Rodgers. Don't let him sit back there and pick you apart because he will. OK, uh, and, and, and I believe Sean McDermott will have a game plan when it comes to Aaron Rodgers. All right. Next up. An injury and a rookie. Second round rookie Osiris Torrance will start at left guard for the Bills. On the right should be Connor McGovern. While his knee injury hasn't been discussed much, McDermott hasn't really been asked about it. Either McGovern has been wearing a brace on the injury for some time now. Uh, will he be good to go? And can those two hold up against an interior D line led by Quentin Williams? Talk about a tough first test. And speaking of the injury front, Hyde was said to be dealing with a back injury, but then he practiced minutes after McDermott said he won it on Wednesday. That's something else to monitor. So, by the way, uh, Hyde, there is no injuries on the injury report. Hyde, Hyde's on there, but he, he was already practicing. Uh, he already said he's going to play. This is awesome. This is great news compared to last year when we were just injuries after injuries. So, um, by the way, McGovern's good to go. He's not on the injury report. We are good to go. And speaking of um, Osiris Torrance going against Quentin Williams, this is great. This is great for Osiris Torrance. Uh, I think he's going to handle his handle his business. Um, but this is a great this is a great test for the rookie. And if he can handle himself against one of the best uh, linemen uh, DTs to do it out there, then he's going to uh, have a wonderful season for the Buffalo Bills. And I think he will. I, I do. I personally think that we got a steal uh, and we got very lucky that Osiris Torrance fell to round two and fell to us because it would have been a huge mistake passing up on Osiris Torrance, who was to me the best guard coming out of the draft and should have been a first round draft pick. All right. Let's get to it. 
All right. All right. 9-11, man, 9-11, guys. Uh, with the date and location in mind, the, the constant being played on September 11th will be a discussion point. MetLife Stadium, Met Life Stadium is only a few miles away from the from the location of the 2001 attacks. Um, yeah, man, like this, this is, this is, they're going to do something special for this. They're going to have a lot of, uh, coverage about nine 11. Um, and man, I remember that day. So, so good, man. Like, like it, it's crazy. I remember where I was at, what I was doing. Um, it, you know, the, it was it just, it, it, I was speechless. Like, honestly, that, that was the most unbelievable thing that I, that I, 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 I lived through right so far in my life. Now it's, life's not done yet, but, uh, nine 11 was just, uh, man, like I, I really, I words can't be spoken. Like, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I, I was, I was in total shock and I think everybody was right. Like everybody was just speechless, right? Like what is going on? Uh, and a brief story where, where I was at, so uh, I was 23 at the time, I think, and 22, 23, and I was a warehouse manager, uh, and I had to be there at 8 a.m., right, every morning, and I used to listen to Howard Stern when Howard Stern used to be on the radio before Sirius uh, XM, uh, and Howard Stern was on, and then all of a sudden, he was like, oh, man, a plane just hit World Trade Center, and I'm like, oh, man, so I'm listening, and I'm like, oh, my God, and I, it didn't pop in my mind, you know, like, like we're under attack or anything like that until that second plane hit. And I ran inside uh, because I knew they, they didn't listen to the radio, the inside of the office, the front part of the, 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 the place I worked at. And I told my boss, I had actually two bosses. And I told my boss, I'm like, yo, you got to come back here. You got to come back here and listen to the radio. It's very important. So uh, the two owners came back. And uh, they were listening and uh, they were in shock and, and they had everybody leave early, uh, go home early. And uh, I just remember driving home and just looking at people on the road, just dead face, man. Like just, just, you know, just I like you could just tell like the, the fear it was. I think I'll, I guess that's the word I'm, I guess I'm going fear and and uh, just uncertainty. I don't know. There's fear in their in their faces and. I get home and 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 uh, the new I'm watching the news and the Pentagon got hit, you know, and and it was it was it was wild, guys. It was a wild, wild time, man. And um, yeah, let, let's let's pray to, that never ever ever happens again. But yeah, this is going to be uh, a a big a big big uh, day. Obviously, they're gonna, they're going to do a lot for 9/11. Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm proud, uh, to be watching that game, proud of my teams on that, that day. Um, so guys, nine 11, you ready? Let's do it. Buffalo bills versus New Jersey jets. Uh, if you guys have any comments, obviously leave them below. Uh, do you guys have any, um, any kind of takeaways, uh, that you want to comment below that you want to bring up that, 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 that I didn't bring up in this article here. Uh, if you do, Go ahead and, and comment below. But anyways, Bills Mafia, you know I love you. And as always, go Bills. I'm out of here. Peace. Oh, my God, there go. He could go all the way. Touchdown. 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 The Bills make me want to kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now. The Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now. Come on and shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah.